Hi, this is Pritika Rao and Maniza Ji. Welcome back on my channel. Our first interview of Narendra Modi's horoscope was a big hit, not only on my channel but your channel too. And now I'm here again, back with you, to discuss a brilliant horoscope, and that is of Sri Ram. And uh, I know a lot of people will be raising their eyebrows and wondering how do we decipher Sri Ram's horoscope? Where are the evidences? So that's going to be my first question to you. Uh, where are the traces and uh, evidences of Sri Ram's horoscope? Thank you for having me over, Pritika. It's a privilege and honor once again to join you on your show. Today is truly an auspicious day. We are discussing the Lord's horoscope. What I'm going to share with you today and our audience, uh, I owe this to my Jyotish Guru, K. N. Raoji. For he has taught me in detail what I'm going to discuss with you today in terms of the planetary alignments and combinations of Sri Ram's horoscope. As you said, where is it that we are finding the references to this chart? In two places, Valmiki Ramayan and Tulsi Ram Chaitramanas. Remember, Valmiki ji, Rishi Valmiki is a contemporary of Sri Ram. Because it is in his ashram that Ma Sita takes refuge when she leaves Lord Ram's palace because of what the washerman says, and I will come back to it because there's a reference of that particular episode and the curse related to it in Padma Puran. I will come back to that. But before that, the references. Since Valmiki, Rishi Valmiki is a contemporary of Lord Ram. And it is in his ashram that the children, Love Kush, are born. So let's first see what we get from Valmiki Ramayan as the date and time for Lord Ram. I'll quote Tato yagye samapte tu ritu nam shat samatye yu tatasch dwadashe maase chaitre nav mike titho nakshatre aditi daivatye soch sansteshu panchasu. Graheshu kar kate lagne vakyata vindu nasaha Prodhyamane jagan natham sarva loka namaskritam kosalya janye dramam divya lakshana sayutam. Let me now explain the shloka to you. Here it is very clear in the shloka that this is a karka lagna horoscope with five planets either exalted or swarashi. Sarvocha. Swa and Ucha. So five plans. Moon in Punarvasu Nakshatra with Brihaspati in Karka. Navmi Tithi, Chaitra Shukla Paksh, Abhijit Mahurta and the five planets that we talk of. Saturn exalted in the fourth house in Libra for a Cancer Lagna horoscope. Mars exalted in the seventh house in Capricorn. Venus exalted in the ninth house with Sun. Rahu and Ketu in the sixth twelve axis. Rahu in Sagittarius in the sixth house. Ketu in Gemini in the twelfth house. And the twelfth Lord, Mercury, in the tenth house. This is the reference that we get from Valmiki Ramayan. Let's come to the reference that we get in Tulsi Ramcharitramanas. Navmi Tithi Madhumas Punita Shukla Paksh Abhijit Hari Prita Madhya Divas Ati Sitana Dhama Pavan Kal Lok Vishrama. This is what we get in Tulsi Ramcharitramanas. Again, Madhya Divas Abhijit Mort. Navmi Tithi and the month of Chaitra. So let's look at this Kark Lagna horoscope. And I would again uh, quote my Jyotish Guru. We have not received this horoscope as a fax from anybody. This, these are the two references that we have. The only reference in degree that we have is of Moon in Punarvasu Nakshatra, and we know 3 degree 20 minutes of Cancer has Punarvasu Nakshatra. At 3 degree 20 minutes of Karka, Punan Vasu Nakshatra is over. So we know 
that moon is in its first navamsha that's the only point that you have because you have a moon punarvasu nakshatra and punarvasu nakshatra is in cancer 3 degree 20 minutes and it's over that's the only span that you get there are a couple of controversies with what we there are these two references and there are three controversies one of rahu where a lot of people say that rahu cannot be in sagittarius that it could ideally the rahu ketu axis could be in 39 not 612 the second controversy is that mercury cannot be in the 10th it should be in the 9th and the last is the placement of the sun and i will answer them here the placement of the sun out of reverence we say because we are talking about sri ram about the ragukul about the ikshvaku kings the surya vanshis and we say that sun therefore should be exalted i am taking this reference and as my jyotish guru k n rao ji has taken and he was told this by his jyotish guru yogi baskar anand who told him that there is no way that sun can be exalted in aries sun has to be in pisces and i will give you a technical point here why should it be in pisces like i have just discussed it's a cancer lagna horoscope with sun and venus in pisces venus exalted in the 9th house with sun the second lord with venus remember that the birth is on navmi tithi and both the books valmiki ramayana and tulsi ram charitra manas both are saying that lord ram's birth is on navmi tithi chaitra shukla navmi after amavasya when the sun and moon are conjunct on amavasya remember sun and moon are conjunct in one rashi at one particular degree one tithi means 12 degrees of difference between the sun and the moon and as we go as we go till the 8th tithi so 12 into 8 is 96 degrees which means at any given point in time navmi tithi will start when there is 96 difference 96 degrees of difference between the moon and the sun if moon is in 3 degree 20 minutes cancer then even if sun is in sun is at 1 degree aries the difference is not 96 degrees so therefore for the moon and the sun to be at a distance of 96 degrees sun has to move down and come to pisces because remember gemini taurus aries 30 degrees of each sign 90 degrees arc 3 degree 20 minutes of punarvasu nakshatra 93 degree 20 minutes so therefore sun has to be in pisces for the distance between the sun and the moon to be 96 degrees because that is when navmi tithi starts navmi tithi will be on from 96 degrees to 108 degrees of distance between the sun and the moon this is how precise our panchang is when we say that this day this particular tithi we don't look at 24 hours in 24 hours the sun and the moon might move 13 degrees or 10 degrees we are very precise our system is very precise the vedic system is extremely precise 12 degrees and we say one tithi okay so that is why uh, i have given you technical uh, reference as to why i am saying sun is in meena sun is also in meena because of another point remember in the adi granth and uh, valmiki ramayan starts in flashback like a lot of films do <laughs> it starts with love and kush uh you know singing this beautifully in the streets of ayodhya they are talking about the ikshvaku uh and the ragukul vansh and talking about uh lord ram and talking about his father and narrating the glory of the great kings in this narration they also refer to and valmiki ramayan talks about it in this narration they also refer to that ayodhya has majestic mansions fourth lord venus exalted in the ninth house with sun the raj lakshana yog jupiter from kark aspecting this combination of venus and sun remember jupiter aspecting sun is an absolute raj lakshana yog and here we are not talking about the majestic mansions of lord ram we are talking about the majestic mansions of 
you know, before Lord Ram, so the father's house, the nine. So therefore, there is a point of sun coming again in the ninth house and receiving this ninth aspect of Jupiter. Now the other uh, controversy, which is Rahu. Why are we taking Rahu in the sixth in Sagittarius? We, have, we always look at Lord Ram with a Dhanush and we always refer to him as Kodand Ram, Kodand, the Rashi of Sagittarius, with the bow and arrow, Rahu, and Ketu, beautifully lined up in the house of Moksha, the 12th house, Kodand Ram. And then I'll come to the third controversy, Mercury. A lot of people say, and a lot of astrologers say, that Mercury should be in the ninth house. Why should it not be in the ninth house? Remember, for a Kirk Lagna horoscope, Mercury is the third lord and Mercury is also the twelfth lord. Lord Rama had illustrious brothers, Shatrugna, Bharat, Lakshman, the avatar of Sheshnag, Lakshman. The third lord has to be in the tenth house. The third lord, if it is in Pisces, it is debilitated. Mercury cannot be debilitated as the third lord. That's one point. Mercury is the twelfth lord. Mercury from the twelfth house looks at the seventh lord Saturn. The wife is taken away from him once and the second time she leaves the palace. So there is Vira twice. As the twelfth lord Mercury aspects the fourth house and Lord Ram has to go into Banvas, in modern days, uh, this thing, we would say it's a foreign trip. So he took a foreign trip from Chitrakoot to Sri Lanka. And you can see the 12th Lord aspecting the 4th house. So Mercury has to be in the 10th. And also the illustrious brothers. The 3rd Lord in the 10th. The younger brothers in the 10th will always give you illustrious brothers. So those are the references along with the three controversies that are very common, which I have tried to address in the best, best possible way. How can we see Rama's stepmother in his horoscope? Remember in those times, even though we know it is because of uh, what Kekai says to uh, King Dashrath, but Rama, Lord Ram is supposed to be our favorite. Remember the Chuda money that Sita ji gives to Lord Hanuman, and that comes in uh, Ram Charitramanas when he goes, when Lord Hanuman goes to Lanka to meet uh, Sita ji and takes the ring of Lord Ram. She gives him as a Nishani the Chuda money. The Chuda money was gifted to her by Queen Kekai. So it's not that, you know, it was always bad. So, uh, to look at why this curse of the mother or what was it that caused him to leave the house, let's look at the fourth house with the malefic, Saturn. Let's look at Bhavad Bhava. Let's look at fourth from fourth, Mars. So, it cannot be negated that both the Kendras, the fourth and the seventh, have exalted malefics. They have their pluses. They have their minuses. But both these kindras, fourth and the seventh, seventh is fourth from fourth as Bhavad Bhava. With exalted Saturn and exalted Mars, I mean, there had to be some problem or some, you know, troubles that would come from the mother. And also that it would involve leaving his place and moving away. Malefics in the fourth and the seventh, ghar ke sukh mein kami karte hain. And in today's uh, day and age, if we look at the horoscopes like that, that's how we interpret. And here also, as I said, Mercury as the 12th Lord is looking at the 4th. So you know it's a long foreign trip from Chitraku to Lanka. And that too defines Queen Kekai here. But remember, he had the love of Ma Koshalya and Ma Sumitra as well. That cannot be defined, that cannot be denied. Let's remember that Jupiter, an exalted Jupiter is also aspecting the 
seventh house, which is fourth from fourth, and exalted Jupiter is also aspecting the fourth Lord Venus in the ninth house with Sun. Let's not forget that. But yes, this chart definitely shows troubles to the father. And I will share one very interesting incident here. Valmiki Ramayan, as I said, is an Adi Kavya. It talks about a very evolved civilization of ancient India. And this is the Treta Yug that we are talking of. We must understand that in various aspects, various points of Valmiki Ramayan, there are very detailed references made to meteors, comets, Lakshar, Shakur, Vastu, astrology. So many combinations are given in Valmiki Ramayan uh, pertaining to Jyotish that one will be surprised that, you know, there is a such a, uh, you know, like a like an absolute repertoire of knowledge. And I will share one example also uh, with you. You know, most of the stuff that is mentioned in Valmiki Ramayana and some of it has been lost to us. We don't know what those muhurtas are that are mentioned in Valmiki Ramayana. So clearly, Valmiki Ramayana takes into account the psychosomatic depths of human personality in great detail because it looks at dreams, at omens. It's, it's absolutely interesting. And why am I saying this when I'm talking about King Dashrath? Bharat has a dream and it is mentioned in Valmiki Ramayana. He says that he can see, King, he once had a dream, he says that I can see. And he narrates that dream that he could see King Dashrath raking himself up in oil, laughing and being pulled in the southern direction. The southern direction is the direction of Yama. He is being pulled in the southern direction on a chariot which is being led by asses, Khachar. This is mentioned in Valmiki Ramayana. And so, Bharat says that I know that some app, this is an ill omen, and I know that my father might, now is the time for him to go. Remember also that as the ninth Lord Jupiter, Jupiter is the ninth lord for Karka Lagna. It is in Lagna with Lagna Lord Moon. This ninth lord has the aspect of two malefics, Saturn and Mars. It is showing troubles to the father, without a doubt. Every Karka Lagna, just like Sri Ram, is blessed with, um, you know, a consort or a, a support or a guide like Hanumanji. So, can that also be seen in Sri Ram's horoscope? See, I agree with you uh, about Lord Hanuman, but to say that every Kark Lagna person will have it might not be possible. I'll tell you why. In Lord Ram's horoscope, Kark has Moon and Jupiter. Remember, Jupiter is the ninth Lord. And here, look at the beauty of this horoscope. Who is the fifth Lord? Mars. Who is the ninth lord? Jupiter. And who is the Lagna lord? Moon. All three are in connection. The Trikonas are in connection. The ninth lord is with the Lagna lord Moon. The fifth lord is exalted in the seventh house, having the aspect of both Lagna lord and the ninth lord, Jupiter. So the combination of Lagna, fifth and ninth, your disciples, your shishyas, and your devotees, will come from the 5th ninth connection. Because of this exaltation of Jupiter, Mars and the connection of the three th trikonas, Lagna is also a Kendra, it is also a Trikona. Because of the connection of the three, only Lord Ram could have had Lord Hanuman. Not every Karkalagna person can have that because then you need the connection of the trikonas and that can happen in another Lagna as well to have a great devotee. Like Ram Krishna Paramans had Swami Vivekanand, but that's not a Karkalagna horoscope. So separation from wife, um, you know, there are astrologers who say that Karkalagna charts have this curse of separation from the spouse. Um, I don't know if you would uh, agree with that, but how does separation from wife pan out in Sri Ram's horoscope? 
let's also give credit to why astrologers say this. Why do astrologers say that for Karka Lagna, there could be a separation from the wife? Because the seventh lord and the eighth lord is one, that is Saturn. For Karka Lagna, seventh house is Capricorn and the eighth house is Aquarius. The lordship for both the seventh and the eighth is given to Saturn. And therefore, as a general principle, we say, oh, there could be a problem. But in this particular case, yes, of course, there's Mars as the fifth lord in the seventh house. But remember, the separation is coming from the twelfth lord, Mercury, aspecting the seventh lord, Saturn. And this separation has not come once, it comes twice. Once by kidnapping and once when, once because of the curse of the washerman. And I will share here a very interesting bit on the kidnapping. Jatayu is the last person and I refer to Jatayu as person. Why? Because he has knowledge of astrology and he, this is how I'm going to refer to it now. This is what Valmiki Ramayana tells us. J Jatayu is the last entity, person who has seen Ravana take Ma Sita. When he is dying and he has his wings cut and Lord Ram and Lakshman reach Jatayu, what does Jatayu say? Jatayu says that he tried to save Ma Sita, he tried his best and now he's at the fag end of his life force. But he tells Lord Ram one very interesting point. He says, Ma Sita has been taken in the Binda Muhurta by Ravan. We have lost what Binda Muhurta is. But this is what Valmiki Ramayan says. And this is what Jatayu says to Lord Ram. King Ravan has taken Sita Ji in Binda Muhurta. Any loss in Binda Muhurta is not permanent. It's reversed back. She will come back. You will get her. This is what Jatayu says. And you will find this in Valmiki Ramayan. So uh, there is uh, no Ramayan without Ravan. And he was his uh, arch rival. How is this rival seen in Sri Ram's horoscope? Remember Shatru is the sixth house, the sixth lord. But the adversary is the seventh lord, the seventh house. Let's not forget that the seventh house has an exalted Mars. And that's how you see the adversary. And I will share some a very interesting point. A lot of uh, people from today's day and age, they say, you know, how can someone have 10 heads? And what do you mean by that? Well, King Ravan's brother tells Sri Ram that if the Amrit Kalash in is in his Nabi, is in Ravan's Nabi, you have to hit there and he will die. So we are clearly saying, and remember that Lanka is of gold. So the combinations that come, this is a man who definitely has Siddhi up till the Manipur Chakra. Because it is only then, because the Matrikas on the Manipur Chakra, the related Matrikas, point to be noted, I am not getting into the related Matrikas and this is uh, the audience might not have a primer to understand what are matrikas here, but the related matrikas of Manipur Chakra are 10 in number. The 10 heads are signifying a siddhi of the Manipur Chakra. That's what the 10 heads mean. Now people can think why this, why? There are various many meanings to this. Only a man of a siddha, uh, who, whose shakti is siddha, whether Kundalini is Ordva Mukhi, can use the Brahmastra. It is actually the, the Shakti of uh, inherent uh, in the microcosm, drawing a parallel with the macrocosm. The Shakti that is inherent in the spine of an individual. The Meru Danda individually will draw a parallel with the Meru Danda cosmically. That is the Shakti of the Brahmastra, which is unparalleled. So, some points need to be explained. This is a very evolved uh, point. And that's, that is how yogis reach certain siddhis. And they were common in, in, that, in that time and age. So the ten heads are signifying a siddhi of the Manipur Chakra. 
Yes, I thought I'd share that very interesting point here. So, Manisha ji, uh, we've heard about Jal Samadhi context of uh, Shri Ram. Did Shri Ram actually take Jal Samadhi? Yes, in fact, in Ayodhya, and I go there often. Guptar Ghat is the place where Shri Ram had taken Jal Samadhi, the beautiful temple there. Now, how do we see that from the horoscope? And here, I will also again take reference to uh, the controversy where people say that sun should be in the 10th house, which is in Aries. The Marika Sthans are second and the seventh house. The seventh is also for spouse, the second is also for Kutumba. But these are also the Marak Sthanas and the Markesh. The lordships of these two houses are referred to as Markesh. Why Jal Samadhi and why not something else? Why is it not showing a violent death? For example, if you look at the horoscope of Lord Krishna, and we are not discussing that horoscope here, we see a different set of troubles in Lord Krishna's horoscope, which is showing his going away by an arrow. In this, it is Samadhi, Swaecha, Swaecha. The second lord for a Kark Lagna horoscope is Sun. If the sun was in the 10th house, then it would be receiving the fourth aspect of exalted Mars from the 7th house. And this would mean a violent death. I don't want to scare the audiences because now people will start looking there at their second houses and say, will I have this or that? So remember, sometimes it does not completely manifest, it, manifest as violence. It also manifests as Kutumb ka sukh na milna. Neil is also seen from the second house. Here the second lord is in the ninth house in the Rashi, which is a watery Rashi in Pisces, receiving the aspect of the ninth lord. That is a hint to Swetcha se. Jal Samadhi Lena, however, remember that since we do not have the degrees of the planets, I cannot cast a Navamsha or a Dashamsha or a Vimshamsha for this horoscope, including a Dreshkon and a Dwadashamsha, which should be looked at in detail. So, with the meager means that I have of no, no degrees, this is what I can tell you on Jal Samadhi. I have also given you a reference on uh, violent deaths. You have those examples, uh, I've taken and told you that in uh, Lord Krishna's horoscope, we have this maleficence happening, which is not there in Lord Rama's horoscope. So therefore, the sun definitely has to be in the ninth house as well. Again, I'm making that point. Yes. Also, uh, you know, the whole uh, controversy about uh, why did Rama listen to the dhobi and, you know, make Sita undergo the Agni Pariksha. I wanted to ask you about this aspect of his horoscope too. See, a lot of people who might not have the knowledge about why this happened might question and find this, you know, uh, and say this is uh, patriarchal. In Padma Puran, there is a reference to this, and I will quote it from Padma Puran here. When Devi Sita is a little girl, She's playing in, in, in her father's house, in her father's palace. And she hears these parrots talking about her and saying, when she grows up, when this girl grows up, she will marry the prince of Ayodhya, the most handsome man. Ma Sita hears this. She tells the people guarding the palace to get hold of these parrots. The male parrot prays and, you know, really says that, you know, please let us be free. Hum swatantra te, hum is swatantra rehne do. She says, let the prophecy come true what you have said, that I will marry the prince of Ayodhya. Till then, you be with me and I will take care of you. You will get the correct food, everything, just be in a cage. They implore her, don't tie us down. She doesn't listen. 
Then she puts them in a cage. After some time, they again implore her. By this time, the female parrot is pregnant. They implore her, let us be free. She now says that I will take care of the female parrot and she lets off the male parrot fly off. The male parrot flying off says that like, like you've made me desert my spouse, my wife, you will also be deserted by your husband. The female parrot delivers babies and dies in childbirth and says, when you deliver children, your husband will not be with you. This is mentioned as the curse in the Padma Puran. And the male parrot says that I will be born in Ayodhya and I will make sure that your husband deserts you. That is the curse of the parrots. And here we believe that, you know, so this is how destinies are intertwined and karma manifests. The effect, the boomerang is, is a very, is a, it takes sometimes a very large time frame. But Kaal is insurmountable, is invincible. So was the parrot reborn as the dhobi to take a revenge? Yes. The parrot is born in the, as the dhobi and this is mentioned in Padma Puran. That is why I tell a lot of people when you, when, when you have to go to someone's anniversary, you have to go for a house warm, warming, you have to go for someone's birthday, carry a copy of the Puranas of our ancient literature. And here I will mention another point. In Valmiki Ramayana, it says, in the month of Bhadrapad, in the month of Bhadrapad, you could start the study of the Psalm of Ved. I think it's a pity that we, uh, you know, in India, we, you know, applaud literature works of different countries, but a legend like Ramayan is not even gifted or read. You know, we should be proud of our legendary um, literature works, but we want to ape the West and applaud them and, you know, not our own literature. This is the irony of Kali Yuga, that though we believe that, you know, we are highly intellectual, but wisdom is what ceases to really sprout in most. In most but then this is the effect of Kali Yuga. That what is right, colossal and immense and wise and another league, you will discard that. But that's the effect of Kali Yuga. Uh, I would also refer here to the Bandarkar Institute at Pune. Uh, and uh, I've heard this from, uh, again, my Jyotish Guruji. Uh, he's referred, he said the kind of scholars and the kind of work that they do is immense. In fact, he said that, you know, in, in the 70s, he had at once one point in time spoken to the uh, Ministry of Human Affairs and and had wanted that somebody should come out with an expurgated copy of Brihat Parasha Hora Shastra, the astrological, you know, uh, compendium. And that could be done by the Bandarkar Institute at Pune because of some phenomenal work that they that those guys do. But then we don't even know these the names of these places that such scholars exist. The kind of work that they do, we don't know. I wish they are appreciated. And there would be many scholars across many places uh, who've done some phenomenal work, but we don't get to appreciate them. We're reading, you know, some <laughs> superficial work sometimes. Sometimes. Exactly. Also, let's, uh, uh, I want you to throw some light on Agni Pariksha and the whole aspect of Agni Pariksha in uh, Sri Ram's chart. Let me explain it. Remember here we are dealing with very high order individuals, very high order souls. You know, Brahmastra is being used. Lord Ram tells the Samudra, you know, if you don't part, part your way and give me way because I have to go to Lanka, I will use the Brahmastra to split you into two. Here, remember that this is the Ikshvaku, the Ragukul Vanshis, the Surya Vanshis. Okay? From the realm of the Agni Chakra, Shakti, that is Sita Ji, from the realm of the Agni Chakra. I hope I'm able to, you know, get through to the audience here. It's uh, slightly esoteric here. From the realm of the Agni Chakra, Shakti is taken downwards to the Mool Chakra. Again, to unite 
with the chit with her spouse with the chit because this is shakti and purusha okay again to come back from moon to the agni chakra she has to do the bhedan of the agni chakra there is a metaphorical point of the agni pariksha and if you see in 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 the map of india lanka is again you know at the fag end so here it's just just a reference that we are saying actually shakti is taken from the agni to the mool chakra again she has to rise come back so there is combustion at the agni chakra again so therefore that is a reference of her uniting with shri ram again at the agni chakra and i will quote this here in the valmiki puran there are two very important prayers that ma sita makes once when lord ram says that now that you have come from you know uh lanka go through the agni and that is what it means she has to unite again with the purusha with lord ram again at the agni chakra she prays mother agni if i am pious and pure if i am chaste if i have not thought of anyone other than my husband don't burn me and the agni doesn't burn her and she goes through chastity is agni chakra satya is agni chakra i said it in a lot of my videos i explained this when she eventually uh comes back and i have explained agni pariksha but i'm adding one point here when she again comes back and you know uh lord ram has you know uh, met his sons and she comes back and now the prayer is slightly different she says mother earth if i am pious and pure if i am chaste then take me within your folds and the earth is split and mother earth comes up sitting on a throne and takes ma sita remember she is janaki and it is said if you read the old literature they say she was found when the land was being tilled she was found she is the daughter of the prithvi she says ma take me into your folds if i am pious and chaste and the earth splits and mother earth comes up and takes mother sita back into the folds of the prithvi tatva here the agni pariksha is her coming back to rama on the agni tatva i'll also add one more interesting point here when she is taken away by mother earth then lord ram who becomes very angry he again takes out takes out his bow and arrow and says that if you don't return mother if you don't return my wife back to me then i will split you into two and there will be no planet earth lord brahma comes at that point in time and he says jeevan ki jo leela hai ab ye poorn hui ab aapke jaane ka samay hai ye leela poorn hoti hai so are there any other astrological references about ramayan and shri ram's horoscope actually there are many 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 uh valmiki ramayana is full of astrological references you know the omens and uh even vastu it says that when lord hanuman goes into lanka he says it's absolutely there are no defects in the vastu of that place it's brimming with prosperity but valmiki ramayana also refers to the to the dream of trijata where she says that i am seeing that you know you're going to that lanka is uh everybody in lanka is getting destroyed other than vibhishan this is a dream of this is a dream that trijata trijata has but i'll share something very again very interesting there is a demon called kabanda who is uh, you know uh, killed by uh, uh, lord ram in lakshman and who is eventually uh, you know he is relieved from his curse when he they cremate him and he says like you ram who is suffering from a bad dasha right now if you connect with someone who is also leading going through a bad dasha then you will get relief through that person and that person ram vah vyakti sugriv hai so this is kabanda who eventually you know uh, gets free of his curse he's a gandharva and he says this to lord ram and here you understand again and there's a reference to the dashas vishakha vishakha is a nakshatra ruled by jupiter and constantly lord ram says the constellation of the ikshvaku kings vishakha is glimmering we will definitely have victory over ravan 
and when he goes into banvas he says mars jupiter and mercury are retrograde with moon and the constellation of the ikshvakus vishakha is clouded and this is the time which is going to be difficult for me and when he's winning he says the constellation of the rakshasas moola meteors and comets are troubling it it's a definite defeat for them so these are some uh, interesting points that you uh, get on astrological uh, references when ravan takes sita they say it's like the it's like um mercury who's taken who is seized rohini from the skies so even a lot of references are given to planets and you know uh, planets and people and you know jatayu refers to the bindu mohurt lord ram refers to vijay mohurt when he tells sugri we must march from kishkindha we must march to lanka now because this is the vijay mohurt so tell us something about uh, aditya hriday stotram and the special mentions of uh, ramayan in it in balmiki ramayan it comes that when indraji indrajit is killed then ravan gets into a rage and says now i will kill ma sita his minister tells him don't do this today is krishna chaturdashi tomorrow is amavasya go and fight ram because amavasya is good for the demons and it will be good for you because you will be victorious tomorrow there is a reason why it is difficult for lord ram to kill ravan it takes him a lot of effort and then vibhishan also of course i've mentioned that that there is the amrit kalasha in the nabi and at that point in time when he is absolutely it says trained in war there is an updesha of the aditya hriday stotram if you read the aditya hriday stotram you will read that it says in hindi if you don't understand sanskrit or in english the translation and says the read it with ekagra devotion thrice and you will be able to slay the demon on the samavasya so here is a very important point on how even on an amavasya when the demons or the asuri shakti is powerful recitation of aditya hriday stotram is powerful enough to slay all negativity wow and uh, any reference of guru gobind singh with uh, lord ram this is very interesting in these days we don't get to hear this because of a lot of you know uh, because certain uh, people don't want to talk about it but guru gobind singh in vichitra natak in his book called vichitra natak refers to and the fact that mathura was taken over by kush and love took over the part which is currently lahore vichitra natak mentions this the works of guru gobind singh the 10th guru of this the sikhs and i don't think sikhs and hindus are any different because in my own family the you know the eldest son was uh, made into a sikh i'm talking a few generations back so when the first son was made into a warrior so guru gobind singh in his work says that we are the descendants of lord ram you and me are not saying this guru gobind singh is saying this we kshatriyas are the descendants of lord ram in fact he even explains who from love and who from kush that is why if you recall the khalsa said that the ayodhya ram mandir is also our place of worship because you get the reference in the works of guru gobind singh one of them is bichitra natak and i will close this with there is a very uh, good book a very small short people can read it called asadivar guru nanak in it talks about atma vasudevasya and there are there are very many accounts of krishna stu bhagwan swayam in asadivar 
देर आर रेफरेंसेस टू लॉर्ड दत्तात्रेय इन गुरु ग्रंथ साहिब it is for people to read and to find out that's all i can say wow uh, thank you manisha ji for such beautiful insights into shri ram's horoscope and also uh, ramayan in general uh, this was such a beautiful conversation with you whenever we chant uh, vishnu sahasra naam uh, there is a beautiful verse which says shri ram 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 eti rame rame manorame sahasra naam tatulyam ram naam varanane which means that even if you say one word of shri ram it's equivalent to reciting the entire vishnu sahasra naam so uh, i would like to end this session by saying jai shri ram jai shri ram thank you